It's October 4th, Tuesday. I'm at the West End Gun Club. Uh, today I took the day off. I actually took today and more off because I've uh, been really busy at work. So I haven't been able to come out to the range. And the weekends have just been too busy as far as the range is concerned to even come out and shoot and get stuff done. So uh, that's why I haven't been vlogging much at all. But uh, Earlier this morning, I was at the uh, the main line shooting my 700 police in the AICS chassis. I was actually testing loads as far as uh, primers are concerned. I just, uh, it's right now it's very difficult to get um, CCI BR2 primers, and so I wanted to, at least locally, so I wanted to test CCI 200 primers to see if there's much difference as far as standard deviation and extreme spread and there actually is quite a bit of difference um, I need to locate my data or I need to refer to my notebook for the data but I think the extreme the extreme spread was about 50 which is insanely high uh, standard deviation was about 15 and that's about the same as with uh, CCR BR2s so that being said, I'm probably gonna stick with CCI BR2s if I can get them. But incidentally enough, I was able to, after I bought the CCI 200s, the regular large rifle primers, I went to um, Phillips Wholesale here in Covina. It's uh, about a 40 minute drive from Riverside, depending on traffic. So I was able to get some CCI BR2s from him, which are this bench rest large rifle primers. So I got two bricks of those. So I'm not hard up for primers right now. So I guess the CCI 200 test was more just uh, for an emergency, just in case. And so the group shot okay. They're comparatively the same as with CCI BR2. So in a pinch, I can use the CCI 200s and they should be okay. <laughs> Granted, uh, I know a lot of people use Federal. I've never used Federal rifle primers in my life. I've always stuck with CCI bench rest. Back when I first started reloading, reloading for the 308, and when I shifted to service rifle and shooting, and shooting the uh, 223 or the uh, service rifle AR, so I've always used CCIs for my my match primers, and and then I switched to um, Wolf for the small rifle. But Wolf primers you can't get anymore because there's some weird importation embargo or something with uh, Russian Russian. Uh, primers I guess because no one else no one's carrying wolf anymore it's all sold out if you look anywhere that sells primers they don't carry wolf primers so I think that has something to do with it anyway uh, long story short CCI 200s there's it shoots a little bit worse than CCI BR2s as far as uh, velocity is concerned as far as consistency so I'm going to stick with the BR2s if I can get federal large rifle um, match I'll try them the 215 M's I believe they are but those are almost impossible to come by, so I probably won't be trying those anytime soon. So I'll stick with the BR2, CCI BR2, since I can get those. Anyway, um, I came out to the back line or the back range since I wanted to shoot a little pistol because I haven't been shooting my uh, pistols at all, and I wanted to get some AR in today since uh, I'm taking the day off, so I might as well spend a few hours at the range and get some trigger time in. So one thing I did with the Glock that I'm brought out today is my third gen G19. 
for those who don't know, uh, I my G17, I shaved off the uh, the finger grooves, but I also did the same thing with the G19. The finger grooves I have a love-hate relationship with on the Glocks. Sometimes it feels good, sometimes it feels bad. But after I shaved on the shaved the finger grooves off my G17, I felt it did just handle a lot better for me. And then so I said, you know what? Why not I do with the, do it with the third gen G19 I also have? So I did that. I added some grip tape from Dawson Precision and just cut some grip tape because I didn't feel like stippling. And so I'm not gonna avoid stippling on these guns for a while because I'm just too lazy to do it and I don't want to pay anybody to do it. But I figure this provides adequate grip for what I need. And uh, it feels a lot more comfortable to hold this gun without the finger grooves because I can put my hand on the gun as I need to and not be forced to stick on the finger groove. So it's a lot better. It feels, especially for the middle finger and how I wedge it up underneath the trigger guard. So I really like this. Um, I like this configuration on my, on my Glocks. And some people are kind of favorable for the finger grooves, but personally I just don't care for them. So that's why I shave them off. I haven't tried to do a back strap adjustment because I know a lot of guys will actually fill in the grip with epoxy and then shave this down to uh, recontour the back strap. And I'm not sure if I want to do that. I don't really need to. Um, but yeah, customizing your Glock as far as fitting your hand is kind of a, is the invoke thing right now. Um, I'm not too extreme on it. I just want to get just enough for me to get to shoot more comfortably. So yeah, that's what I'm shooting today. It's this um, old uh, G19, third gen. It's pretty beat up right now. Um, the slide is starting to show a lot of wear on, this, um, on the holster for holster wear, but I'm probably not going to refinish it. I'm, I used to shoot the RMR on my G17 but I got rid of it because I had so many problems with the RMR uh, failing. So I went through three. And so I just gave up after the third one. I'm debating on just risking it again. So I'm thinking about sending this slide in to get, get milled by probably AETI. I think it's ATEI or AETI. I can't remember what, how the acronym goes, but think about getting them to mill this for me and I'm gonna get an RMR again, the RMR 07 and try it again and see where it stands. Um, if it, Hopefully I can get one that works. Um, I'm not eager to try it out soon. I still have other projects to work on. And then, um, so obviously spending 500 for an RMR and another two, 300 for the milling work. And I'm probably gonna get some slide cuts done if I do have it milled for an RMR. So I'm not feeling like I, to spend, like I wanna spend $700 on this gun like right now. So I still wanna get my surgeon action. Um, for those that don't know, I'm looking to get a surgeon uh, 591 repeater so I can get another project going next year. So that's my next uh, next thing to buy is that Surgeon Action. It's going to run about 1300 So I'm going to get that. I have that Savage at CDI Precision. Uh, if you remember from a vlog ago or the previous vlog, I mentioned that I was going to send my Savage off to Florida to CDI Precision Gunworks to get bottom metal installed in my McMillan, uh, my Savage with McMillan stock. So that's actually over there. And they said um, a couple weeks back, it's just about a three-week lag. So Hopefully um, next week or the week after I'll get it in and I'll bring that out to the range once I put the scope base back on and the scope and then uh, we can see if the uh, bottom metal actually works well. And if the bottom actually works well, the, if the bottom metal actually works well, that means I may rebarrel the gun because I, the barrel's got about three to 4,000 rounds on it and I might risk going to 6.5 Creedmoor on it or maybe a 260 Remington, we will see. So I haven't been shooting any pistol in the vlogs ever since I started it. And that's mainly because I just kind of fell out of shooting pistol for a while because I was just doing a lot of work with the AR and then I built that precision bolt rifle. But as I mentioned earlier, I shoot a lot of Glocks and I have a couple 1911s. But for the most part, I can't shoot pistols much because my, my eye, is not, um, I have a condition in my eye where my, my, my right eye, which I'm, my di I'm right eye dominant, can't focus. So it's fixed focus because I have a synthetic lens in there. So with correction to see infinity, I can't see my front sight post that distance. If, I, if I'm uncorrected, if I take off my glass, I can, still, I can see my front sight post perfectly, but I just can't see my target well. So it's kind of a, that's where the red dot came into play and that's why I was shooting the red dot for a while is because the RMR gave me the ability to see infinity through my, my sighting system and then see my target. So 
I can shoot well enough that my I can see my front sight post, but it's just not crisp. But when I try to focus on the front sight, I'm not perfect, and therefore I don't get that that quality of a uh, sight picture. Because if you if you understand uh, marksmanship, always want to focus on front sight post at the very last moment you break your shot, because that helps you call a shot. If you can't call a shot, you can't be a good marksman. As far as practicing with the pistol today, I'm not doing any kind of uh, a lot of drills. I'm just basically getting some shots in with the trigger time behind the Glock and then drawing for my incog, which I don't really practice with much. Um, this is the uh, appendix carry holster made by G-Code. It's called the incog holster. He makes it for, or they make it for HSP or Haley Strategic Partners, which is run by Travis Haley. And so he's been pushing appendix carry. And um, frankly, I think it's a nice way to carry a pistol concealed. Um, I use the uh, the single clip version. This is the uh, double clip version, the original one that came out a while back. And then I have the single clip version, which I carry my G26 in when I'm uh, when I can conceal carry. And I like appendix carry; it's actually nice. Um, you have to, it takes a lot of getting used to as far as movement and sitting down and whatnot, and how you adjust it. But it's a pretty good option, and I think it's a lot faster than um, the uh, four or five o'clock where I used to carry on the backside. So I used to carry on the back side, uh, like close to this area, four o'clock, and uh, as far as uh, either inside the waistband or outside. And I think that's a little bit slower, and it's harder to draw depending on the angle. So I like a penny carry, so you can just draw from the front, which is a lot better. Or if you place it closer to the groin, you can just pull up. Um, again, it's more of a. It depends on your frame, so it might not work if you got a bigger belly, which I'm getting there. But uh, it's, uh, I think it's a lot better for speed. It's a, it's a good combination of speed and concealment. Again, but a lot of people are afraid of appendix carry simply because of the uh, nuances with a negligent discharge. So if I draw and fire, I have to make sure that I clear my uh, the holster and make sure there's nothing in that area because if something snags in there and gets caught in the trigger, and while you're holstering, obviously it could negligent discharge. And on this angle, you're going to go right through your thigh, your groin, and depending on where your where your junk is hanging inside your pants, you could shoot your shoot your penis off or whatever. So, not a good idea. So obviously, people are wary of appendix carry. That's why you just got to be deliberate. Clear your holster. Make sure nothing gets caught in there. So you're good. Um, there's been stories of guys who have shot themselves with appendix carry at the range or whatnot, and. Um, I think some of those were actually people who had their finger in the trigger when they were holstering, which I don't know why they would do that, but I mean, it's all fundamentals. So if you're the kind of person who's just going to lapse on your fundamentals of safety, appendix carry is not for you. So I mean, that is what it is. So there's one new uh, modification I made on my AR-15 um, as of late, and that's the uh, swapping out of the BCM Gunfighter Mod 4 charging handle with this new Geisley supercharging handle. Supercharging handle because that's what they called it. Uh, anyway, they had this, uh, they had these prototypes at SHOT Show January 2016 at their booth, and they only until September finally released them. So it took them a solid eight to nine months to come out with the supercharging handle product. I just got mine uh, a few weeks back. I took some photos of it, but I haven't posted anything on it. There's not much to do as far as a mini review. It's just a charging handle. Uh, it doesn't affect how well you can shoot. It might affect how well you can manipulate the gun. But this being ambidextrous, my BCM Gunfighter Mod 4 is, only, um, is not ambidextrous, but the way they designed this such that it's the right side, because the, traditionally the left side of the charging handle has actuates the claw that holds it to the upper. But the right side is the way they designed it, it's supposed to be perfectly, um, I guess it's perfectly in tune with the left side, so there's no issues with it not pulling back off the claw 
uh, fully when you use the uh, right side of the charging handle. But being ambidextrous is not even a big deal for me because I still keep my hand on the firing control when I manipulate the rifle. So I'm still using the left side of the charging handle. So that being said, I can still use the USGI charging handle with no issues and not need an ambidextrous charging handle. But these are AR-15s. Everyone knows that AR-15s are you know, modular guns. You can modify them ad nauseum. There's so many different combinations of things to do. And me being a Geisley fan, I love the triggers. I just wanted to try out the charging handle because I thought it was cool. And you know what? It's a waste of 100 bucks. I mean, it's a waste, I say, because again, it doesn't improve your shooting, your accuracy. So, I mean, it's just one, one mod to make on a gun that really didn't need modifications, but you're just doing it because you can. Anyway, I had no problems with BCM Gunfighter 4. I think it's a it, gun mod 4. It's a great charging handle, but the Geisley is just one new option if you're looking for a new charging handle to trick out your AR-15. Why not, right? But again, it's, uh, I think it's 100 bucks. So if you feel like spending 100 bucks on a new charging handle, knock yourself out. Um, I'm gonna run some rounds to the AR with this new charging handle. And there's not much to say. I mean, this, I, don't, I can't anticipate there's gonna be much to say about the charging handle because again, it's just a charging handle. Doesn't affect the way it shoots. So anyway, that's pretty much the only thing I added on here. And I'll probably post some photos on my blog. And I don't even want to call it a mini review, but I will. Because <laughs> there's not much to say about it other than the fact that it's a new new item that's available to consumers now. So uh, check out Geisley's website if you want are interested in, in their new charging handle option. Especially if you want ambidextrous. I'm a right-handed shooter, so I don't really need it. So Anyway, let's, let's go shoot this thing. So I've been to a couple of the AR, the America's Rifle matches, which is that NRA uh, program that's starting to, is trying to start up as far as just action rifle shooting. And it's, so it's a lot of new shooters. And what I notice is when people are instructed that you need to come uh, safety on once you come off target, a lot of people are just not aware of that. And I'll admit I slip sometimes, but I'm very aware of the fact that I need to once I come in on target, I safety on off. Then when I'm coming off, I'll safety on. So it's kind of a, a you kind of have to build that into your into your psyche, and uh, it helps to have an ambidextrous safety to do that because once you safety on, you can actually just use your trigger finger when you come off to just nudge that safety to the on position. So safety off, safety on. So safety off with the thumb, safety on with the with the trigger finger coming off. It's a lot easier, um, and it makes uh, Makes yourself a little bit more safer as far as uh, being around other people when you're shooting rifles, especially the AR-15. So just uh, be well aware of that fact if you're in that kind of environment or any kind of environment. Your safety should always be on until you're on target ready to fire and safety off when you're off target. Or safety on when you're off target rather. So it's pretty simple, simple uh, cadence. You just got to follow through on it often. So just kind of build that in yourself when you're practicing at the range. So I'm pretty much done for today. I've expended all my rounds. I do have 30 rounds left um, for AR, but I'm gonna keep that just in case something happens. You never know, you might have to go to it on the drive home. But uh, that's pretty much it for, uh, I guess, my shooting today. So yeah, I haven't been shooting again. I mentioned the beginning of the vlog. Uh, I've just been busy at work. Unfortunately, uh, we lost some personnel at work. They had to leave uh, our organization. So uh, it's been really busy. I've been delaying all my vacation days and then as far as possible. And I was actually going to take vacation next week, but um, I have to go out for a conference. So I can't take those days off. Otherwise, you know, I'm wasting my days off. So I'm uh, taking today and tomorrow off. Uh, much needed a range time. I just haven't been able to shoot. Uh, Pendleton's actually having a 3 by 1000 match this weekend on Saturday, Sunday. I don't think I'm going to shoot it. I kind of want to, but I have no real reason to shoot. Um, 
I kind of know my zeros. Just if anything, just to go out and practice a thousand yards. So maybe I'll go Sunday. I don't know. Um, as far as other shooting related things, uh, again, my Savage is still at CDI Precision. Uh, hopefully I'll come back soon or in the near, very near future so I can uh, bring that up for the next vlog. Um, I actually have a 308 lower um, on order right now. Uh, it's been on order for a month now. I need to call and see what's going on with it because I kind of wanted to stash away 308 lower given the laws in California that have uh, passed and are probably going to be um, made law on the first. So I wanted to get a 308 lower registered and uh, turn that into possibly a 65 Primo build. I don't know, but it's only $130 for lower, so why not just have it stashed away for just in case I want to build something. So that's pretty much it. Um, you guys, uh, I know people ask me questions off, not on the channel, on YouTube or on videos. They ask a few questions, I'll answer them, but some people also reach out to me on email. So I definitely, if you go to my website, okfj.net, you'll find my, my contact information. There's also a contact form there. Feel free to reach out to me for any information that you might have or any questions that you might have and any for information you might need. Uh, I'm always willing to answer questions. I always get questions from guys who um, are shooting high power and they want more information. Even though I don't shoot high power anymore, I don't shoot across the course, I still have enough uh, knowledge to pass it on to them to help them get started or whatnot or give them tips. So I'm always um, very open to answering questions. Uh, if you have any kind of shooting related questions or whatnot, I'm always uh, open to answer those things for you. So anyway, that's pretty much for today. Um, it's all, almost 11 o'clock. So Gonna pack all my stuff up, probably get something to eat, and then uh, definitely gonna go to the gym today. And that's pretty much it. Go home, clean the guns. And until then, I'll see you at the next vlog. Oh, you're fine. That guy's trying to trying to go out there. <laughs> okay, okay. I guess when he gets here. Yeah, it's hot. I don't know he's waving me off going like that. Go ahead and shoot. Oh shit, he's going out. <laughs>